Watch me performing a quick and easy full digital bank reconciliation on Sage Accounting. Cause when we're together, it feels like we're in heaven. If it will get dark, you'll be my million stars. I know I can lean on you. Oh, you catch me like a leaf falling from a tree. In our first video, I showed an example of a bank reconciliation for beginners which was followed up with the most challenging and time-consuming bank reconciliation method, the dreaded, full manual bank reconciliation, which still has its place in your arsenal of business skills. In the previous videos of the series, we also touched on definitions, reasons for doing bank reconciliations, and what you need to do a bank reconciliation. Please follow the link posted on the screen if you would like to see what those videos were all about. You can follow along with me and compare my bank reconciliation methods to yours, as well as to use this video as a comparison to measure Sage Accounting's bank reconciliations with other accounting software available. Displayed on the screen are the bank statement on the left hand side and the Sage business accounting on the right. In Sage, I'm currently working on the cash book and I'm going to the bank reconciliations from the top navigation menu bar by moving my cursor to banking, transactions and to the right, reconcile banks and credit cards. Click on it. In the bank account field, you select the specific bank account that you want to reconcile. In the from date field, type in the starting date and you will notice this message always coming up when changing any fields within the Sage bank reconciliation area, stating that you will lose any unsafe changes. Do you want to continue? Click on yes. Enter the last day of the reconciliation in the to date field. The balance that is displayed is the bank balance according to your accounting records. I have to search for the bank statements balance and it is on the second page the closing balance of 4259.90. It is a bit confusing but this is a credit card balance and a positive amount is actually the amount owed to the bank and I have to enter it as a negative statement balance amount. Once this is all done, selecting the relevant bank account, starting date, end date and statement balance, the fund can begin by correlating the amount from the bank statement to the accounting entries. Firstly, I'm going to sort the bank transactions by date, which will make it much easier for me to find the corresponding bank transaction amount. I'm using the bank statement as a base. Starting from the top of the bank statement, the first transaction of 998 is also the first transaction of the accounting books. And I mark it as reconciled by clicking on the checkbox under the reconciled column next to the amount. Once the transaction is ticked off, it means that the transaction agrees with the bank statement. I'm going down the bank statement transactions to the next amount of 1953.44. I find the corresponding amount in my cash book and mark it off as reconciled. I'm going to follow this process with all the bank statement transactions right to the end. Follow me if you would like to see what I'm going to end up with. It's going to be quick. I don't really pay any attention to other aspects of a transaction during the bank reconciliation process. I only concentrate and focus on whether the amount agree to the bank statement. That is it. I consider the categorization, payee, dates, references, taxes and other bank field entries during the bank payment and bank receipt allocation process and not when I am performing a bank reconciliation. I will cross-reference the dates and other fields when I have transactions of the same amount. 
Zoning in that way, placing each task in its own separate little execution box and focusing on one thing at a time helps me to be organized, following a system which will save time and money. I've marked off all the transactions from the bank statement and they all appeared in my cash book. But in my cash book, there were transactions recorded in a period that did not yet go through the bank. These transactions are called reconciling items that will be reflected as outstanding on the bank reconciliation. They will hopefully appear on future bank statements and do not have to be captured again. They will only be removed from the outstanding items list on the bank reconciliation. At the bottom of the report, the totals of the transactions are collated and the reconciled total agrees with the bank statement balance, indicating that I have successfully completed this bank reconciliation and I can print it. On the left hand side screen is the final bank reconciliation report, which starts with the bank statement balance, lists the outstanding payments and adding the outstanding receipts, which are the items that were not matched to the bank statement and not ticked off on my cash book. That equals the reconciled balance, which must agree with the computer balance from my books. We are happy because there are no differences. The final step is to save the bank reconciliation. I've seen from experience that if you do not get the bank reconciliation right, it is mostly due to a small lapse of concentration. Let me show you a real example of where my bank reconciliation was out and how I discovered the problem and then the steps taken troubleshooting to correct it. These mistakes happen often with a lot of people. Maybe as I reveal fixing the errors, you will learn something from this. During the bank reconciliation process, everything went really well, right up to the end, where there was a small difference of 21 cents. Any difference after marking off all the cash book transactions comes as a shock, but let's stay calm and follow me while troubleshooting the difference. Scrolling quickly through the bank statement, looking to find this amount of money, I can see on the bank statement a transaction on the 29th of December. Interest on credit balance for 21 cents. But if I remember correctly, I set the end date of the bank reconciliation at 28th of December 2020. Therefore, the 21 cents transaction occurring on the 29th was excluded from my bank reconciliation. Let's fix this, shall we? I'm saving the work that I've done this far and I'm changing the beginning date of the reconciliation, selecting the correct bank account and most importantly, changing the end date of the reconciliation to the 29th of December. And something not to forget is to enter the bank statement's closing balance. The transaction should be marked as reconciled on a cash book, but there is still a big difference. <laughs> Let's stay calm and don't panic. Okay, let me think. Oh, there it is. I've entered the bank statement balance as a positive amount, but it should be a negative balance as the credit card statement from this bank shows money due to the bank as a positive instead of a negative. Now that I fixed this, you can see that there is no difference and the printed or shall I rather say, the downloaded bank statement report looks quite neat and clear. While this was my version of a quick and easy bank reconciliation, showing you all the details and steps taken along the way. For me, Sage Accounting provides the best experience for bank processing and reconciliations. Hopefully you can take something with you 
from watching this video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.